Hi, my name is Renee Lucatus. I am the mother of a 10 year old boy with autism. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Shara Rignarajara. I'm a pediatrics resident here at Queen's University. Hi, I'm Dava Santo. I'm a developmental pediatrician at Queen's and I um, work at Kids, Kids Inclusive. Our project is co-designing a better patient experience when children with autism spectrum disorder attend outpatient testing clinics. And this is a patient-oriented research because the idea came from um, families and children with autism. We know that children with autism have a much higher healthcare utilization than their peers, but they don't always have the greatest hospital experience either because of anxiety or not knowing what is suspected or um, communication challenges or sensory aversions to sounds and crowds and lights. So our goal is to improve the patient experience when attending outpatient testing. So I'll pass over to Rene. Yeah, um, first of all, my son has um, more than one condition. He does have autism, but I just wanted to mention that he does have also co-occurring conditions such as asthma, um, ADHD, um, he has 9P deletion syndrome. Um, as well, we just discovered from his uh, dentist that he has a narrow palate on the top, which will require some reconstructive work, um, which is, we feel, due to the 9P deletion syndrome. So as a result of these co-occurring -con co conditions, um, my son and I have had to visit many outpatient services from like dentists to to eye doctors um, to appointments for his respirologist for the asthma um, and we've had very frustrating experience overall um, you know the experience i could i guess break down into sort of three separate stages from not knowing what to expect even before we go to the appointment where you know it's our first time visiting a specialist and we don't know the doctor we don't know what the procedure will entail um so the next part is the environment when we get there you know we don't know if it's going to be or it, you know what the environment entails if it's noisy if there's weird sounds if there's weird smells, a lot of people, how we're received, how long the waiting is. Um, there's many factors that will affect the experience of just arriving to, to the facility. And the third component is the actual interaction with the, with the doctor, the physician or specialist and how that goes. And, um, you know, ideally it would be great if all three areas were, were perfect, but um, what we've experienced is that there's usually one, two, or if not all three barriers in those areas, which can make it quite frustrating. And being a parent of a child with autism has been been very hard. It's, it's quite a complex condition that it's been a huge learning curve for me. I'm, I'm a single parent as well. And so I don't have a lot of support and, you know, I learn along the way, which has made me hyper aware of these situations. And I like to diffuse any barriers as much as possible. Um, you know, it's, it's really challenging. As Dr. Samdup mentioned, these experiences um, affect sensory, affect his communication, um, social, all these things as well there's a bit of an intellectual disability um, they really hinder the experience which you know has actually caused me to forego many appointments I've av avoided you know if I really don't have to go with him we will avoid it just to avoid the stress so these situations can be very stressful and you know I'm a big advocate to help you know make it as good as possible and as smooth and um, we'd love to partner um, with all of you to help as much as we can so that you know my son's outcomes of everything is as beneficial as possible thank you renee um You're welcome and just as renee briefly mentioned i think the key word there was you know partnering and that's essentially what our project um is doing now and i hope to continue doing that 
partnering with patients and patient families to optimize the care that they receive in outpatient clinics. And so our project itself is divided into two parts. We have a part one and a part two. Part one is in the form of social stories. And so the creation of social stories are these pictorials and videos that will kind of give a guideline and an outline of the different steps involved in, for example, getting an audiology assessment or getting some bloods taken. And essentially this is based, the premise of this is based on that children with autism who are aware of the steps involved in a procedure can help decrease the anxiety they face when undergoing the procedure itself. And so we're teaming up with an ABA therapist who's helping to create these social stories for our five different um, outpatient clinics. Uh, the second part of our um, project uh, is based on experience-based co-design. ABC is an approach that essentially it's a partnership between you know, caregivers and families and together working to create solutions. And so as part of part two, part two, we're first distributing surveys and these surveys are going to be completed by families and um, patients. Um, and we're using the service to gather information about simply their experience um, when attending these outpatient clinics. And after gathering that information, a selected few families who are interested in then doing an interview will be doing a one-on-one -on -one interview with um, the members of our team. And they're again have an opportunity to, to simply communicate to us their experience, what went right, what went wrong, what are their thoughts. And it's for us to learn from, you know, their observations, their expertise, um, and then use that information as co-design solutions. And that's going to be the third, the last part of that. Um, so surveys, interviews, and the last is a co-design event where we're hoping to meet physically um, staff in the five different outpatient clinics, along with the families and patients who participated in our project, to together find ways that we can then propose um, to KHSC to better the experience um, of our patients and families who come to our outpatient clinics. I would just like to say that sounds wonderful. I feel the best time we've had an outcome with experiences with outpatients is when there was that partnership and uh, collaboration between myself and whoever was doing the appointment. We were able to really meet his needs and we built a trust, we built a rapport. The outcome was amazing. It was much faster there was no trigger like it was just such an amazing experience and you know for my son he could look forward to the next appointment thereafter so it made a huge difference so really i think that's an amazing approach and yeah i'm just hoping that with like what renee just mentioned with the co-design solutions it can be implemented in the, to make the system level and service delivery changes so that the barriers that she had mentioned with her visit to the hospital, I mean, we, as um, in the healthcare industry, we are more aware of it and uh, bring down the barriers. I think that's the number one thing. And it's not, it's helpful, I think, for not just children with autism, but with any children or youth with other neurodevelopmental disorders, or even adults. And even the resource that the videos and the pictographs um, that we are developing, it's like for every child and youth with neurodevelopmental disorders, anxiety, even adults and children with autism too. So I think this would be a wonderful resource, not just for those five clinics that we mentioned, but also in other clinics and other departments and hospitals, if they can adopt that. that at least that is our hope. I just want to also add that we have other members of the team who are not here today. Michael uh, Tetramus, um, our um, medical students, Josie Simon Moshi and uh, Brian Wong, Helen Koo from the Department of Pediatrics, and Naomi Marast from Kids Inclusive. Mm -hmm.